Hello, everyone. Glad to see you all here. Welcome. Uh, my name is Georgi. I work at Logo, and today I wanted to present the topic of why PMs sometimes don't manage product. I tried to understand the reasons laying in the bottom of it and uh, to provide some ideas on how to overcome this and become a more successful product manager. I will uh, plan my speech as follows. I will start with uh, making sure that we are all aligned about product managers' responsibilities, the skills required, and the teams that you will be working with. Uh, then I will outline common misinterpretations of the product manager responsibilities and how they hinder your progress. Also, it might and it, it most frequently uh, results in you not being able to manage product properly. Finally, I will have a few ideas on how to avoid uh, all these caveats and progress in product management and not uh, be burned out and keep yourself motivated. Hope some of those will be useful for you and uh, let's start. So who is the product manager? I formulated it as follows. Product manager is a person whose key responsibility is to deliver value to the customer. While delivering the value to the customer, you have to use limited resource of technology and, uh, and products that you have, and also comply with all the business constraints that exist, such as uh, budget limitations, uh, legal obligations that you have in a certain country to operate, and any others. So in the end, your goal is to make sure that the customer hires your product to, uh, ser to serve their needs. And this requires quite a broad spectrum of knowledge, which is why you will also be working super closely with a cross-functional product team. It is usually a team that consists of engineers, engineering leader, such as product, man uh, product uh, engineering manager. You will also be working closely with product analysts, product designer, user research uh, experts, data scientists, and sometimes QA. Uh, not all of those functions exist in all the companies. It depends on the size of those or the particular subject area the company works in. But those are the most typical functions of the product and engineering teams that you will be working with. On the non-product and non-engineering side of the company, there are stakeholders of all kinds. Marketing, who makes sure that your product gets distributed to end customers. Finance, who are responsible for um, automating cash flows, making PNL a reliable report, and all other kinds of uh, financial operations. Legal, who makes sure that you comply with all the regulations uh, needed. And finally, customer support, who are helping your customers overcome any challenges that happen when they are trying to use their, your product. There might be a wide variety of stakeholders, also depending on the industry of, that the company operates in, but the exact list doesn't matter. The point is, there are external stakeholders that you will be working, in, working with, and they are the source of the business constraints for you. In the end, as a product manager, you work in between the following quadrants. You work to deliver value to the end customers using the limited resource of product team that you have and also get, getting uh, to comply and respect the business constraints that exist for your company to keep operating. This requires quite a wide variety of uh, knowledge and uh, most, most oftenly, when you start as a new joiner PM, you need to learn new stuff, regardless what, of what were your previous experiences and uh, what is your background, what is it your, your education, etc. As a PM, you're really in between of lots of functions and you need to work with them quite efficiently. So why sometimes it is hard to manage products and why we cannot uh, focus on it uh, well enough. 
there are, uh, as I mentioned before, being a product manager is no easy. And uh, this issue is most more typical for entry-level PMs, but it also exists in the future. So I try to figure out the main reasons behind uh, not, not being able to manage product and provide some reasons why that happens. First of all, uh, you might be uh, doing someone else's job. As a PM who works uh, between non-product uh, business uh, counterparties, together with a lot of functions of product to serve the needs of the customer, you are required to know a piece of everything. And even before you stepped in as a PM, there already, in most of the cases, was some kind of a product in the company. There were already other product managers, there were already business stakeholders, and there were already customers in, the, in this company. So when you, before you stepped in, the product function was done by someone else. In most of the cases, it is not a single particular person who was uh, filling this gap, but you, it, it, these functions were scattered across different people all around the company. For example, marketing does the customer research, runs the surveys, runs focus groups, etc. Then products require, like feature requirements are formulated by external stakeholders, product team in the end, gets to design the interface and develop a feature so to ship it to the customer. When you step in, there are always people who already work with a given product and already know better what is happening to the customers and how the company works, which is why it, you, it requires some time for you to fill in the gaps, the, the gaps of your knowledge and uh, become a fully uh, self-sustainable product manager. But sometimes due to lack of experience or maybe due to not being expected by others to fill in all those functions, you might end up just working with the requirements of uh, senior management or non-product counterparties. In the end, you might end up uh, just uh, fe uh, shipping features with the and like organizing the work of the product team. This happens most commonly because being a product manager requires a lot of communication, a lot of execution, making sure that uh, features get delivered in the reasonable quality, in the reasonable time frames, and the delivery pipeline is sequenced properly. So in this uh, landscape, it is easy to forget about getting to know the business, getting to know the customer, and you might end up uh, working as a project manager. Another important caveat is that it is quite an easy thing to have an opinion about the product. And especially if someone else is more experienced in working with a given uh, company uh, than you. There are always competitors whom you can compare your product to. You can get ideas of the features from the competitors, from the competitors of, like, from the other mobile apps, from the other industries etc. But it is not necessarily what specifically your customers need. And this is an important thing to bear in mind as a PM. So sometimes you might not be expected to deliver value as a project manager, but rather as a project manager. Moving on. Uh, the next reason of uh, us not being fully focused on the role of being a product manager is the other way around. We might be, in turn, doing someone else's job. When a product manager is not expected to, uh, and, or empowered to build value, get to uh, chase the business, to help you to create this value for the customer, and being a source of uh, this drive for value, you might end up filling in someone else's uh, gaps. Most typically, you start being a project manager, but uh, in addition, 
if your team is not well equipped with some other function, you might also be required to fill this in. For example, if you don't have a designer on your team, you might end up building sketches of the interface for your development team. Or if you are uh, not uh, equipped enough with an engineering capacity, some of your features might not have an admin panel, for example, and you will be orchestrating all kinds of configurations and feature toggles to, to configure your product for different um, markets or different cities, etc. You might end up doing some operational job or doing the job of some other uh, person in the cross-functional product team. Don't get me wrong. It is important for a product manager to know how all those things are done and uh, know how the design works, how to cut the scope of uh, technology, how to cut the scope of the project and do an MVP, how to run simple SQL queries to retrieve some basic metrics. But it is not good if you're constantly filling in someone else's uh, job because you may get distracted from focusing on delivering value for the customer. The next reason is us being obsessed by redesigns and A-B testing different configurations of the user interface. This sometimes happens when you are quite well equipped by designers, analysts, and your internal uh, A-B test platform is quite automated and mature so that you can run a lot of experiments. Um, so sometimes it is an important thing to do, but it is only valuable when you keep your customer's feedback in mind. And you're with every A-B test, you're moving towards solving the bigger issue that your customer has. Otherwise, and more frequently than not, uh, some teams run A-B tests just because they can, and this ends up being brute forcing your way towards certain metric optimization. It might be a good idea and like a very uh, optimizational task for uh, a huge company that is already super successful and in we're increasing your metric by 0.1% returns a lot of uh, revenues or users or other important stuff uh, to your company. For example, if you're working on the Google search page, you probably will get huge success if you increase uh, conversion to advertisement uh, clicks by one percentage point. But it's not the case uh, for all the uh, companies working with products. It is important to bear in mind and challenge yourself. Are you running all those A-B tests and doing all those minor tweaks in the user interface just because it is harder to do other stuff or just because you can. You need to be absolutely sure that whatever you do is the most valuable thing for the customers. So it is also important that if it's harder to make the business counterparties collaborate with you to solve heavy and, and complex issues, you might also end up just doing whatever is in your uh, area of responsibilities and influence. This is a caveat that you need also to be aware of. And last but not least, uh, sometimes your team's success and your own success is not measured in the value that customers get. Uh, the most common uh, misconception that happens here is that when a new joiner PM steps in, their success is mostly measured by the throughput of the team, the number of initiatives uh, delivered, and the general happiness of the people that PM works with, which usually comes with the transparency of the backlog, making sure that people get what they want, and other very operational and, uh, manager and uh, executional stuff. So, this, if your team's success is measured by the throughput of the team, this is a kind of red flag for you that you might not be uh, doing product management properly, and or maybe you are not expected to do it that way. So there are quite a few um, 
reasons and it's quite easy to end up not uh, managing product or not working in a fully focused and fully empowered product management way. But what can we do about it? I have a few ideas and hopefully some of those might be helpful for you. First of all, since you are always expected to uh, relieve the burden of execution, you need to really excel at it. As you step in, the very fast and the very important thing that you need to do is to gain uh, trust of uh, your stakeholders and your own team by improving the processes, improving trust within, within the team and uh, shipping the project uh, in a predictable manner uh, with an imp impeccable quality so that the customers are happy, there is less firefighting and more controlled and structured execution. So you as a product manager need to apply your technical design and analytical knowledge to speed up the delivery process, find places where you can cut, can cut corners without substantially reducing value for end customer. And basically you need to optimize and do project management at a very high quality. Next up, you need to make sure that your team uh, delivers an output that is measurable and that plugs into the broader company product strategy. It is important that your success is measured in real uh, world values, and it is tied to certain metric that can be objectively measured. Um, another important thing is that some metrics can be uh, like good or bad, and they can be either sustainable for just a product team or for a product team and some other teams within the company. For example, if an output metric is number of customers acquired per month, it might not only de depend on product, but it doesn't mean that the metric is bad per se. It means that you need to be super closely aligned on your execution and roadmap with your marketing counterparties who work on uh, promoting your product for new customers. Your, your roadmaps need to be aligned. The goals that you need to achieve need to be aligned. And you both need to know each other's domains quite well. Which brings me to my next point. As a PM, you really need to understand the business that your company is operating in. Uh, and it starts from the basics. How does the value create value? And how does it earn money? The very basic unit economics of your company is a must for a product manager to know. Another uh, important thing that I mentioned with the previous uh, proposal is that when your, your output depends on non-product uh, function, uh, function of the company, you really need to understand all the aspects of working with this uh, <clears throat> business team. What is their business context and what are their limitations? If you are working, for example, on the admin tool for customer support. You get to know how much does the company pay for, uh, for the service of a customer support agent. What is their motivation? How much does the rent of a call center cost, etc. And the other way around. Your stakeholders really need to understand your product and you really need to understand the business aspect of what you're working on with your stakeholders. Finally, the probably the most important and the most unique thing that product manager has to have is the knowledge of the customer, which is why you always need to keep talking to them. And this, I mean, literally, not only running surveys and reading the scripts uh, or watching recordings of certain user interviews, also talking yourself to the customer if you have such, a, uh, such an opportunity or if you don't have it, you might need to create one. So another important thing while working, talking to the customers is that you ha never have to disregard what they have to say. Um, the biggest value the PM contributes to is synthesizing customer feedback and technological, technological capabilities and the business constraints into the product customer value. So even if a customer complains about the prices of your product, which you cannot uh, change overnight, 
you really need to bear it in mind and make sure that you deliver as much value as for as low price so that the value time like value over uh price uh, ratio is as high as possible for the customer for example if you're working on a streaming service and the customers uh, don't um, don't like the fact that you don't have some titles on your streaming on the on your streaming it doesn't obligatorily mean that you need to forget it you shouldn't you should bear in mind that the variety of content is very important for your customer and then you need to transform this feedback into the ways to solve the issues with the technology and also to understand if it's feasible by by the means of executional or operational excellence that your company can deliver or not <coughs> i'm sorry so yeah here are some of the ideas and i wanted to summarize all of them with just one point uh, as a product manager you are required to know a wide variety of things which means that you have to constantly keep learning so the better you understand the business limitations and the way the business is run by you and the competitors and in other industries the better you understand your customers mindset and which role your product plays in their lives the better it is for you to synthesize the actual technical and product solutions that they that will cost that will bring value to the customer's lives so it means that regardless of how much you already know the most important thing that you uh, need to focus your attention on is what you don't know yet so push your boundaries of the comfort zone uh, get to know how the products work how business works how customer thinks and those unknowns are what uh, brings innovation so good luck thank you all for watching let me know what you think in the comments and uh, goodbye.